Minute, number one podcast in the universe. We live with the Chicago legend, S Dot, man. What's the word? What's the word, my boy? What's going on? What's just working, man. I appreciate you uh, coming on the show. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I was a little asleep until A1 put me on, and I went back and looked at your history, and I was like, damn, he really one of the originals. So I, I got to pay my respect, man. Oh, yeah, he was asleep for sure there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, man, I'm excited to have you on the show, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you having me on the show. Hell, yeah. All right, man. Well, shit, let's, let's just get into your background story. You know, this is our first interview. Um, so originally from Chicago, right? For sure. What part? Southside. Okay. Go on the south side. I'm from there, what else? So I stayed out west. And my pops from out west. So, so, you know, I was there, well, I've been there, well, hundreds. I mean, all around, see. So born and raised on the, on the south side, but you lived on the west side and in the hundreds as well? For sure. Okay, bet. And what was life like growing up before, like, the music and stuff? Were you playing sports or anything like that before you started rapping? I just always did music. I ain't gonna lie, I've been doing that shit since, like, fourth grade. That was my sport. I ain't never for no athlete or that shit. I always had a conversation books full of raps. I always wanted to rap, shit. That was my talent. Like, I, I was trying to myself, and that's what I found. Like, this one we do. I found that early, you know? Hell yeah. That shit since a legit. Since I can remember, for real. No, that's real, that's real. How old were you when you started rapping? Shit, it's like I can remember, like seven, eight. Since I was just playing with words and trying to rap, but I started taking this shit serious. I was like, shit, 13, 14. Okay. What, yeah. what year would you say that was? Shit, what that was? Like 21. 2014. I don't know. Whenever I was 14, I'm 27 now, you know? Whatever that was, it doesn't matter. Shit like that. So for a minute then, for sure. For sure. Okay. Were you like, who were some of the other artists and rappers you were like working with when you first, you know, start getting into it? Oh um, shit, it was me. Broski, who I had, shit, 45 men rocking. It was me, him. You know? One of my other homies, shit, he don't rap no more shit. It was like three hours, four hours, you know, but shit. Yeah. Me and bro kept this shit going, kept this shit alive, shit. But really just saying niggas I started with, still, I'm still with, 45. A couple of us, there ain't too many of us. It's a couple of us though, we still around. Hell yeah. You and you said you? Huh? Go ahead. I've been saying shit, you know, you know, you know. You know what you know, you know. All my mixtapes got the same artist features and shit. They know the 45. Then Rocket King, Sumo, you feel me? Same niggas. Okay, no Jamal, shit like that. So you said you were writing raps? Yeah, I used to just be writing them before I was recording them. I was like 13, 14 when I started recording myself. You know? But before that, I was just shit, writing that shit down, like a little conversation, no books and shit. You know? Yeah. Do you it's still like write your raps? Crap shit. Say what? Do you still write your raps or do you go off the dome? Yeah, I still I still jot my shit down in the um on the Apple on in the notes. I write my shit down. I like my shit to be right. If I ain't jot it down, I'm gonna punch it in, you know, I'm gonna do punch ins and make sure that shit's still perfect. You know, I like perfect my shit. What are some of the pros to writing down your raps? Cause you know a lot of people nowadays they just go in the studio, go off the dome. But like you say, you real like artist, you really take your craft serious. Yeah, I take this shit serious. I ain't gonna go in there and say anything. This shit ain't, this shit ain't for play play with me. This shit like, you know, anything with my name on it gotta be like that. So I'm gonna make sure I take my time, perfect my craft and do it right. That's why I jot my shit down. I'll do it 10 times, make sure it's right. We ain't got nothing but time. I'm quality over quantity. That's real. That's crazy you say that though, because even even me uh, just looking at your uh, discography, man, you got like so many hits, so many singles, so many tapes. Mm -hmm. Like, so you must be recording every single day. Got thousands and thousands of songs. Shit, I got like I'm sitting on mixtapes right now, and I'm back in that mode. Shit, I had took a break from music. Shit, 
I got like three mixtapes. I ain't draw right now. I'm just How much? Oh uh, yeah. How many songs would you say you got unreleased? At least a hundred for sure. I got at least a hundred songs. I could push it out right now. I could drop an album right now if I want to. Get all my beats cleared and really drop an album. But I just be dropping mixtapes, you know, keep my fans on their toes. I ain't gonna drop no album till I, you know, sound a real major. No, oh, that's real. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, what was the Chicago rap scene like when you first started? Was it popping yet or? Yeah, no, nah, we got this shit popping. Niggas like me, when nobody looking at Chicago, niggas like, first place you think music, like places like Atlanta, New York, you know, big cities. Right. And shit like that. We yeah. a big city too, but we Midwest, so we like in the middle. The South always had that exposure, or you know, the West, like California, shit. They always had a little more light because it's labels and shit. We ain't had right. that, so we had to get this shit out of the mud. I'm part of that, you know, I'll help put that light on Chicago, back of Chief Keep, and all that shit. That no, that's weird. Okay, real quick, since you brought up the Midwest, whoa. Would you what would you consider Denver? I don't even know if you even have an opinion on this, but out here in Denver, we say we're the West, but some people say we're the Midwest too. Nah, we consider, consider y'all West. Y'all like West Coast type shit. Hell yeah. Okay. But yeah, let's y'all close was, to Cali and shit, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're on West. West. Shit, Midwest is like shit, Chicago, Illinois, Wisconsin, West Coast, shit like that. Indiana, Midwest, Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you said you were around. You were one of the originators of like the drill music. And I, I look back. It looked like you had a song with E Day and Chief Keef, "Hustle Hard" in two thousand eleven. Yeah. You go look. I got a song called Drill Music, like two thousand twelve. Two thousand twelve. Yeah, that's that drill music. I one of the first niggas made that a thing, like drill music. We made that a job. First nigga so, saying that me and Coop don't let you they don't let Pac Man too, yeah. you know, Joe City. He a part of that, you know. But we put a little twist on it, gave it our own little sound, you know. Yeah. So you would say you're one of the like five originators of, of the drill music? Yeah, so yeah, you can count on one hand, you gotta say me, you know. For sure. Hey. That's yeah, facts. So you you had that song uh, with Chief Keef. What was uh, you got any like memories with Chief Keef growing up? Plenty of that shit. Yeah, that's my home. That's my boy. You know. Yeah. It's for sure. It's my brother. I got plenty of memories. Do you have any like ones you could talk about that you know untold stories or anything <laughs> like that you could think of? It ain't shit. It ain't shit, man. There's a lot of hood shit, cause we grew up together. That shit ain't like no highlight of my life or nothing. That's just my brother. Right. I'm so y'all are still... How's y'all's sure. relationship to this day? Y'all still talk? Y'all yeah, still my cool? brother, yeah. We tap in there once in a while. Yeah, tap in one. You no, know, I, I salute him for that. Cause niggas don't even do that. They just get a check and go. <laughs> nah, that's, that's real, that's real. So. I also seen you got a lot of music uh, with with a lot of people from 600, you know, Breezy, um, Take a Poem, yeah, and, yeah. and others. What was your connection like with, with them? I mean, shit, that's the hood, 600. That's where I'm from. So that ain't really, shit. it ain't no major. You know, we all from the same block, go up together. So yeah. we same couple, the same club. So everybody been in cahoots with each other since youngest. So it was really too much for us to get in the studio and make something happen. Shit, we'd be around each other and shit. When we grew up around each other, you know? Yeah. Who who was all, who was like the beginning of 600? Who was all part of that rap group? Shit, it's a lot of us. I'm so happy right now though, but all back shit, I, you know? The niggas who know all back for sure, like the LA's, the Rondo's, the E-Days, you know? Yeah. The 600 Breeze. You know, team six hundred, the S dots, niggas like that. You know, for sure. Yeah. How do you feel about six hundred to this day? Is, you know, everyone's still pretty cool. Or do you feel like things kind of? We still so six hundred. We still double O. Everybody shit, doing their own thing. It ain't like it used to be. 
You know, we, yeah. don't, we don't really move as Team 600 no more. Everybody got their own shit, you know. Some of the guys signed on uh, OTFs. You know, some of the guys just got their own shit going on. I got my own shit going on. You know, 45, you know. So yeah, we still 600, but shit. Everybody's just trying to chase their, you know, chase their dream, chase the music and shit, doing their own shit, for so. sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, what about Rondo? I seen you got some old music with Rondo. You have you talked to Rondo recently? I know he's he's locked up. Shit, I ain't holler at little bro recently. I ain't gonna lie. He gonna holler at me though, he gonna tap in. But shit, yeah, he'll holler at once in a while. I make sure, you know, level head and shit, little bro straight, he trying to get back. Yeah. You know, free the guys. Free twenty two too, man. Free them niggas, man. Do you do you have any like updates on on that situation? You think he has a chance to get out or anything like that? No, not for real. Shit, I've been saying look, internet shit and shit. You know, I don't I don't drop that shit though, so I don't know what to believe when it come to that shit. I'm waiting on bro to hit my line. I didn't no. No, that's real. That's real. So before, like you know, the drill scene is. It popped off and it's known as how it is today. Like, did you see it getting this big and, and to where, like, you know, there's a bunch of artists signing, a bunch of artists doing millions of views on YouTube. Like, did you see this happening when you first started? I don't know. I don't know what I, I, I ain't really had no vision, no tunnel vision for the shit. I just knew something was going to happen because shit, people gravitate to us too much. You know, the world was fucking with us too much. It was like a, it was like a wave. Chicago had a real wave, so I knew something was gonna go on. I just ain't know how far this shit was gonna go. As you see, this shit went very far, so. Yeah. Yeah, so. What were some of the key moments, or what do you think really blew Chicago through the door? You think it was Chief Keith blowing up, or what do you think it was? Um, yeah, for sure. Gotta get it to Sosa. He put the spotlight on this motherfucker. Cause before solo, those niggas like go twist the Kanye them. You know, that was a whole nother wave, a whole nother sound shit. He put that drill in the door. He put us on the door with that shit. Right. So shit, hell yeah, I gotta hit the soap. What do you think gravitated people towards Chief Keef so much? <laughs> that Chicago how real that shit is. So you see, they want sugar coated. Some people come and leave that shit. Like, how old is he? He was 16 and 15 when he came over. For like, hey, this little boy talking like that. But it, it was real shit. He wasn't saying shit that ain't. That's facts. So, yeah, it was just authentic drill music. At that time, shit, it was authentic, real authentic. Shit kind of, you know, it don't even, to, today, 2022, it's a little not. Shit kind of watered down. That was that real drill feel back in them days, you know? Yeah. How do you, yeah, how do you feel about this the Chicago like drill music now? Do you feel like people can still pop off from it? Do you feel like there's gonna be a new sound? Like how do you feel about it compared to I mean, yeah, shit. I'm gonna always support the city shit. I just like shit, you know, the times change. Sounds change. Shit. I just, you know, ain't nothing gonna never replace that, that original drill. That was like a, that was that vibe was just different, you know. That's right. Like, but I'm fucking with the new sounds and new ways, yeah, but you no know, ain't shit fucking with that way. For sure. Oh, that, that's, that's real. Um, how's your relationship with Take Capone? I, I seen a, I think it was a 16 shot him interview. Um, Y'all had like reunited and stuff. What was, what's that relationship like? Yeah, that's Brody. We locked in. Bro, we got music and shit too. We gonna drop soon. It's my boy. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, and then uh, I wanted to talk about another one of your uh, older hits, uh, Clout, with Lil Dirt. How did uh, that one come together? Shit, we put that shit together. I had shit, came on with the song. I reached out to Dirt, like shit, you know? I had my people get in touch with his people. We did it like that, you know? Yeah. Shit, well, you classic. One of my classics. Do you remember uh, hanging out with Dirk a lot too before, uh, you know? Y'all nah, started? We ain't hang out a lot, nah, nah. So we just fucked around with the music. 
we gotta just renew the relationship. Okay. No, that's that's real, that's real. Um, have you talked to him recently or anything? Or is, like you said, nah, it's just nah, I didn't know relationship with Lil Durk. Okay, so okay. We just did music in the past, that's what that was. Yeah. So, you know, when I look at a lot of your old old visuals and stuff, you know, you you got a bunch of songs over millions, you know what I'm saying? Skrilla, 9 million, Every Day, 4.8, and that's just a couple. Um, do you, how come you didn't necessarily, like, I guess, have you signed before or are you still independent? No, nah, I'm independent. I ain't never signed shit because I ain't. One never done came my way that was worth, you know, stop yeah. doing what I'm doing. They got to come correct when they come. Cause you, see, you see what you just said, I'm doing them numbers, that shit off, off the muscle. So right. when they come, they got to just come correct, you know. Yeah. So, but it's a couple situations on the table, you know, yeah, fucking right now. Sure. Right. Yeah. Were you, did you like ever consider, I mean, I'm not even sure if, if like, I guess it is. Would you, did you ever consider signing to like GBE or OTF or anything like that, given you guys were all kind of connected growing up and stuff? I mean, nah, shit. I'm just, you know, I just was always affiliated and shit. Nah, I was trying to get my shit off the ground. I had always, always had my own as I respect yeah. it, you know? Bro, no respect what I got going on. Just like I respect what they got going on. We ain't never step on toes or nothing like that. Yeah. I had my own shit, you know? Oh, so, really yeah, I ain't never want to get under nobody umbrella. So I just want to always do my own shit because I'm a natural born leader. Like, I just, I don't see me not doing what I do, you know? Right, right. And your own shit is 485, right? That's your label? So, 485, that's your customs. Okay. When did you create that label? Shit, I created that shit. When we do that, shit, forever ago. <laughs> <laughs> That was established. Uh, that was a 45 label was around before the Team 600 label. That was uh, already established before we established Team 600. Yeah, that's crazy. You, uh, who's all part of 485? Shit, it was a lot of us. It's just original members now. But you know, Bruno don't need rap. I'm just name them do the music right now. It's just me. My boy Ben Rocket, you were here with me and shit. 45 Ben Rocket, my brother 45 King Sumo. You know, that's it right now. You won't go. But shit, that's a lot of us. I'm all my brothers, they ain't on the front line and none of that shit. No, that's they don't that's rap. Real. I just, you know, that's family. But we got a little team and shit. We're finna start pushing the ones who is doing the music, you know? Yeah, no, no, that's real. Do you ever feel like. You should have signed a, a deal, or did you ever get any like crazy offers or anything like that back in the day? Oh, hell no. I always felt like shit. I'm doing all this shit these niggas who signed doing independent. Yeah. So, shit. Hell no. Nah. Ain't no major reached out, so I ain't fucking with no shit. I just feel like shit. Are we on the same type of time? I don't need you. Hell yeah. What are some of the pros and cons to being independent? Man, this shit ain't, this shit ain't what it seems, you know? That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. I ain't gonna get too deaf because it's, you know, it's a good thing. I don't ever want nobody to feel like you need a machine to do your thing if you got good music. Put that right. shit out, because that's all I ever did. I just put it out. I never had that machine to push nothing or, you know, None of that shit, so I just put the music out and the fans gravitate to it, so I ain't gonna give you pros and cons. I'm gonna just say, do your shit. If you independent, just go all the way. So, cause there's, you know, it's different strokes with different folks with this shit, so. Right. Oh yeah. Do you ever feel like slept on or or anything like that? Yeah, so, that's why I got underrated for the drop, man. Yeah, my new man's take call underrated. DJ Bigger Rankin, one of the hottest DJs from Atlanta. We finna drop this shit, like September 3rd. Hottest shit, I'm finna drop, just go crazy. Just put this shit out, cause I know I'm underrated. 
I know mm-hmm. I'm slept on. I know that the fans know. Everybody who listen to my music, they know. Yeah. So, yeah, this shit overdue. It's time to just turn up. No, that's real. Do you have any, like, dope features on that tape, or is it just you, or what's the direction with that tape? I ain't gonna talk. You just gotta... You gotta listen? You just gotta listen. A lot of new hey. shit coming, man. Not a new feature, so. Okay, good, man. Uh, rest in peace to L.A. Capone. Uh, it seems like y'all had a, a good relationship. Um, My how big do you, how big do you think, you know, Capone would have been had he still been around today? Shit, bro, it was amazing. Huge. Oh, that's real. Still do you have any? Bro, still major. RP on you know? Yeah. So. Do you have Do you have any, like, dope memories or untold stories with, with Capone you can speak on? Yeah, I got plenty of memories. That's my brother. We grew up. It ain't nothing I'm going to, you know, get into, you know, along the LA for sure. Right. Okay, okay. Um... I seen an interview with 16 Shot of Visuals. Like, we ain't got to go into in depth or anything like that, but you have you, are you cool with Memo 600? Have y'all made up or anything like that? Is, is everything good over there? Or? Shit, there ain't no beef or nothing like that. I just, shit, it just ain't my crowd or nothing like that. I don't fuck around. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So. How do you feel about Chicago as a whole? Like, how do you feel like there could be more peace, you know, moving forward? Or what do you think would need to happen? Shit. I don't know. The city's so fucked up. Shit. I don't know. I can't. I ain't. You gotta, it got to be a lot of muscle. Like, stop a lot of shit that was going on right now. You know, we ain't got a lot yeah. of muscle. And a lot of people standing up. So it's going to be a lot of. More killing is gonna be a lot more violence, so shit. I just gonna pray for this motherfucker, you know? This yeah. shit like a never hit a cycle. It's fucked up, you know? Yeah, no. That's real, that's real. Rest in peace to King Vaughn. Did you know King Vaughn growing up? Yeah, I knew Vaughn. So he from Parkway, from Overlock. I know the whole hood. I grew up right there, too. Hell yeah. Did you, uh, did you think he was gonna get as big as he did? Because he. He's I don't definitely think nobody knew he was gonna get big or thought he was gonna that shit surprised everybody shocked the world. That's why that shit so you know so crazy, so legendary though. Lonely upon too, I fuck with what he had going on. I salute that. Real yeah, niggas yeah. is like, you know, a lot of niggas don't give back to where they from. Like I told you, niggas get where they going and forget, you know? Right. So salute him, yeah. RP him. Right. No, that's real. He always just seemed like he would stand up, like you said, he would give back to his homies he grew up with and stuff, so I respect that. Um, I know you brought up O-Block. It seems like, you know, a lot of people go down there and shit. I even took a trip down there last summer um, just to drive by and see it. Like, how is it from your perspective, you know, having people from the outside in just coming to the hood to, like, show love and, and and see see it. You know, it's like a, what would they say, like a landmark now, you feel me? Not even necessarily just O Block, but a lot of the hoods down there on the south side of Chicago. How does that make you feel? You know, given that I'm sure that wasn't really happening when y'all first started and stuff, like seeing that now, how does that feel? Shit, I like that shit. That shit feel good to me. Like I said, like putting a light on the city, man, all that shit, just surround putting a light on the city. I like that shit. Shout out to them. No, that's real. Uh, I also noticed you did a, you know, a lot of interviews with uh, Zach TV, man. Rest in peace, Zach TV. What kind of impact do you feel like he had on Chicago? Um, shit. First, really. Yeah, Zach one of the first, you know, original niggas doing this shit. So he had a huge impact on the city. And Zach was like, he broke that cycle. Niggas was scared to do what he was doing. You know, Lone Lair Zach TV though. Yeah, he um, 
Man, he he really he started my first interviews. Yeah. A, a lot of people didn't really start blogging until Zach started, to be honest. I, I mean, I even when I first started doing interviews, I was watching a lot of his interviews. So, so definitely my boy. Hell yeah. Uh, no, what you got on the way? Yeah, yeah, no, for real. What you got on the way? I know you just brought that tape. You got any videos or anything else to, for the people to be on the lookout for? Yeah, man, DJ Mill take it, dropping the project, live from the kitchen. That shit coming soon. Me and my brother, 45 k soon. We drop for Finesse Gang too. We got Finesse Gang out right now. We'll get that shit streaming all platforms. 45 Finesse Gang. I got Call Me Dadarachi 2 out right now. Shit, that live from the kitchen be out September. Underrated be out September. Blue A2 coming. Shit, probably like October. Shit, just tap in with me, man. Follow me at Dadarachi for sure. Hell yeah. If there was like one visual or one song you would want the people to go check out after this interview, what would it be? Um, shit. Want- go scream everything. Go stream. But go check out that new shit that's on the radio right now. Get it back. That's the new single out from the new mixtape on the radio. So shit, y'all go check that out and make sure y'all stream and download all the new projects. Shit, just tap in. Hell yeah, hell yeah. All right. Who are... <laughs> Since we were talking about this before the interview, who are like your top three to five rappers of this generation? Top three, shit. I'm number one. <laughs> then I'm gonna get to um, shit. It's just me. <laughs> oh no, I don't see niggas, bro. I ain't gonna eat lots of me, me, and me. Top tree. I'm in top tree, man. Dadarachi, S. Dot, and Dot. <laughs> you never know which one you get them. Full on grade. Hell yeah. Okay. Who were you listening to, to, like, growing up that, you know, inspired you? And You said, I would listen to uh, niggas like Bump J, Lil Wayne. Yeah, niggas like Bump J, Lil Wayne, shit like that. Jay Z, uh, you know, everybody who was who, who was going crazy, a real artist who could really rap for sure. Hell yeah. Do you have any uh, artists you fucking with in Chicago right now that you you would show love to or you pay respect to? Nah, just shout out everybody doing their thing, man. Anybody who doing this shit, nobody specific. Just my niggas, 45. For sure. Shout out my niggas for doing this shit, man. You know, they know who they is. Keep grinding, man. Hell yeah, man. No, that's real. That's real. Okay. Well, shit, man. Um, oh, yeah. And then uh, during that 16 interview, you said shots were, were fired. Yeah. 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 Like in the background? Yeah, they got the shooting going. It's crazy. So, do you feel like Chicago is like. I don't know how to word this. Like, do you feel like it's it's safer than people make it seem to be? Or is it really like. Like, what's your perspective? Do you feel like the internet kind of blew it out of proportion at all? Or do you feel like, nah, it's pretty accurate? Yeah. I said, I said, it could get. It could get blew up out of proportion sometimes, especially for people who ain't from here. Like, you know, yeah. I don't know, cause sometimes I just feel like shit. I'm adapted to it, so to the next person, this shit can be chaos and crazy. But to me, it's normal. So I don't know. To each his own. Nah. Okay. No, nah, that's real. That's real. All right. Well, shit, man. Um, do you have anything else that you want, you want to get off your chest? Any like shout outs, anything like that? Shit. Shout out with Al Ha. Fuck with you, bro. Shit, that's about it. Shout out 45, District Class. Shout out my boy A1 Management. Shit, shout out the game, man. 45, for sure. Yeah. I was going to ask, too, actually, how did you uh, connect with A1 Management? He put this all together, man. Shout out A1 Management. Um, shit, actually, bro, we started, I got back up with him. Shit, we got up, we linked up. Shit, it's been just a little ass since. It was like family. Bro, want to see a motherfucker win, so you know I love that. 
I lock in, I lock in with motherfuckers who want to see me win, you know? No. Or who want to say any type of time as me, because it's Jim, so. Yeah, no, that's real, that's real. Do you, uh, <laughs> would you ever want to live outside of Illinois? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even know so, if you yeah, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna turn the rack out first, then I'm gonna get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> gotta get up out of here. Where would you can't sit in these bitches. We get, we get rich, you gotta go. That's the goal. Niggas be forgetting the goal sometimes. You know? Get rich, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So, where would, where where would, would you move? move? Shit, somewhere. I don't know. Settling where it's hot. You know, drinking rain, palm trees. <laughs> Smoke and weed, <laughs> shit like that. I'm not. I'm chilling. I don't want to be less treacherous. I twenty four seven. You want to relax, bro? Get your money. Get the fuck on. Put your feet up. That's what I work hard for. Yeah. So, what would it take for you to sign a a major a deal? Shit, I mean, as long as they talk right, the situation right, man. You no. Know? And then make sure everybody, make sure everybody, you know, on the same type of time. As long as we here, you know, the situation sound right, it's a go. The numbers right. But shit, if they ain't talking right, I'm independent. I'm going to shit. We got to shout out the mud. No, that's weird. Is there any, like, dream features or anyone you do want to work with that you grew up listening to or just anyone you fucking with that you're like, damn, I've worked with him? Not all top shit, but I'ma just say I'm fucking with who fuck with me. Shit. Motherfuckers yeah. act like they, you know, fuck with my music and show them love. That's the people I'm fuck with, you know? I show love, yeah. they show love to me. Yeah, so, what about any platforms? I know you got like a Vlad interview, No Jumper, Zach TV. Like, is there any other platforms you'd want to do an interview with? Shit. I ain't gonna lie, I wanna to touch all platforms. I want the whole world on them, because you know everybody got their certain platform they chat, tapped in with, like certain people just watch Mal Hot every day, you know? Certain people watch Vlad every day, certain people watch 16 every day. I just wanna be on every platform, so I'm in everybody's face, you know? Gonna know who I'm in, so I think it's just best to touch all of them. For real. Yeah. No, that's real. One thing I've I've noticed about you is like you have done a lot of interviews, you've worked with a lot of platforms, and you're really easy to talk to. Like you you will tell your story, man. I respect that. I appreciate that. What do you think so, is the importance of, you know, tapping in with bloggers and interviewers and, and different shows and stuff like that? Shit, I just I know how that shit go, you know. My fuckers wanna know the real deal, so I just wanna get to them wrong. So that's why I do the interviews and shit, but you know, I don't get on here and do all the policey shit, you know. We get on yeah, shit and do the music and I'm gonna right. let y'all know how I'm coming. That's it. So that's I just it. like showing my fans love, that's all. No, that's real, that's real. Have you ever been to Denver? Yeah, I did a show out there a couple of years ago. You gotta come with, back. Yeah, for sure. You said you were fucking with who? Sorry. I said I did a showdown uh, a couple years ago. I was fucking with them. They was fucking with me. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, we gotta we gotta do another show or something. Let me know if you, you come yeah. down here. Yeah, I was it's fucking with them. I don't like they weed. But shit, it's cool. Shit, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> why, wait, why don't you like the weed? Was it too hyped up before you that came? That shit was terrible, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I come not believe that shit was in the dispensary. They took me in the dispensary. They took me to the to the block. Like, none of this shit smoking. I fuck with Denver though. We busting out though. Oh uh, yeah. Shit. Hopefully uh, after this interview, man, you can get some some Colorado artists to tap in for the feature. You know what I'm saying? It's just shout out Colorado, man. So I fuck with y'all though. Oh uh, yeah, man. All right. Well, shit. I think that that just about wraps it up for me. Um, make sure. Can I get it? I know you already shout us out. Can I get another shout out for Mile High Media one time? Oh, yeah. Shout out Mile High Media, man. Fuck with y'all. You know, shout out A1 Management 45G. You know, game. Oh, yeah, <laughs> man. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Comment down below who you want to see next in the Mile High Minute. Hit that subscribe button and hit that make bell. Make sure y'all follow us. Yep.
But yep, make sure y'all go follow S Dawn and everything. All links will be in the description. Go watch, go stream, all that, man. Um, you got anything else you want to speak on? Anything coming up that you you want to get off your chest? I know you spoke just about on everything, but you said no, I said I'm says. All right, man. I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Mile High Minute, number one podcast in the universe. Yeah.